Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the injury report for week four of the fantasy hockey season. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you so, so much, guys. Without further ado, let's jump right into the content. And the first guy I have on the injury report is Jakob Silverberg, who was recently placed on IR on Halloween for COVID purposes. So he's going to miss at least 10 days, which means he's going to miss till at least Tuesday the 9th. So expect him out of your lineup for at least those 10 days. Days. Next is Ricard Raquel, and he was placed on IR on Friday, unfortunately, and he is listed as week to week, so he's going to be out for quite a bit. In the vast majority of leagues, this guy is droppable. If you have the IR room, you might as well hold him, but otherwise, you can just let him go. If you need someone to replace him, Troy Terry is having himself a hell of a season, and he makes for a pretty good ad if he's not already owned in your league. Next is Victor Olofsson of the Buffalo Sabres, and unfortunately, he has some kind of soft tissue injury, which is really unfortunate considering the timing and how well he was playing. But unfortunately, guys, you're going to have to plan for at least a week without him in your lineup. This is not the kind of injury that's going to just heal overnight. I do expect him to miss at least a few games from this. Next is Devon Taves of the Colorado Avalanche, and he hasn't played a game yet this season, and he wasn't expected to play until about this week. And it looks like he is probably going to play this week. He didn't end up playing on Wednesday night, but it looks like he could be in the lineup on Saturday. If he's not, he should be back in their first game next week. Next is Kale McCarr, and he was placed on IR, and I don't think this injury is too serious. It's supposed to be a day-to-day injury, but... The IR placement means he's going to be missing at least a week, so don't expect him back until next Tuesday. But other than that, guys, Kale McCarr, I don't think he's going to miss too many games. And honestly, it's not the worst thing that he's on IR right now anyway, because Colorado does not have a lot of games this week and next week. If Bowen Byram is still available in your league, he makes for a great Kale McCarr replacement because he is now getting McCarr's top power play time. Next is Mikko Rantanen of the Colorado Avalanche, and initially his... Injury was not believed to be serious, but he's missed his third consecutive game now because of it and was ruled out a day before in this last one. So no, I'm not expecting him to come back this week. Next week, probably he'll be able to come back just because the coach did say he doesn't think it's super serious, but there hasn't been that much of an update. So while I would expect him to be back in your lineup next week, it's not guaranteed. Next is Andre Burakovsky of the Colorado Avalanche, and it looks like the co- entire Colorado team is like injured at this point. It's really ridiculous, but Burakovsky, he was wearing a non-contact jersey and missed Wednesday's game, which doesn't bode well. It looks like he may be like a week or so away, at least, because when you're not wearing a contact jersey, that's not a very good sign for a hockey player. Burakovsky should miss a few games, hopefully can be back next week at some point. If JT Comfer is still available in your league, he makes for an excellent Rantanen or Burakovsky replacement because he's skating on the top line with McKinnon and Landeskog and is also playing on that top power play. Next is Mike Smith of the Edmonton Oilers, and he's not going to be out of the lineup for much longer. So if you do have Koskinen, probably not going to be too useful for you much longer. Mike Smith could play as early as Friday's game. If he doesn't play on Friday, he'll play in Edmonton's first game next week. Not too worried about that one. Next is Anton Lindell, the Florida Panthers rookie who was looking so good before going down with injury. Good news for you guys that own him. Coach said that he could be returning as early as their games on Thursday and Saturday this week, which is great news. Next is Sam Bennett, and he was initially believed that he was going to play on Thursday this week, but it looks like that's not going to be the case, barring some kind of miracle. Hopefully, he's able to play on Saturday. I really do love Bennett, and it sucks personally for me to see him injured. I love seeing him on the ice. I love seeing how great he has been in a Panthers jersey. Worst case, guys, I think he misses Saturday's game as well and comes back early next week for their Monday and Tuesday games. Next is Radko Gudis, and he's dealing with an undisclosed injury. And basically all I know is probably what you guys know and that he's probably not going to play on Thursday. And they haven't divulged anything else about this injury, so hopefully it's nothing too serious. Next is Drew Doughty, and last week he was announced that he was going to miss about eight weeks of the season, which is a pretty long time, guys. 
And at this point, he's still going to be missing another seven weeks about. And if you need someone to replace Dowdy, or if you need a defenseman, a depth defenseman, Kale Clegg is getting top power play time in LA. And as of this recording, he has two points in two games replacing Dowdy on that top power play. Honestly, might make for a really good sneaky ad in your league. Next is Victor Arbitson, and he was put in COVID protocol, so he missed the last Kings game. But honestly, as long as he doesn't actually have symptoms, he could be back as soon as their next game. So I'm not too, too worried about Victor Arvidsson's health. I don't think he's going to miss too much longer. Next is Matt Zuccarello, and he had symptoms and was placed on COVID IR last week. So he has to unfortunately miss a bare minimum of 10 days, which could put him on track to play on Saturday. But if he doesn't, he should be ready for next week. Until then, guys, Marcus Foligno is playing on that top line with Kaprizov and Eric Sinek and has a significant amount of value. Next is Carey Price, and it looks like he's going to be completing the player assistance program on Friday, which could put him on track to play with the Habs pretty soon. Give him a few days after that, you know, to get into game shape, and possibly he could be in your lineup as soon as maybe not next week, but probably the week after that. So next is Philip Forsberg, and he was basically a game time decision for Wednesday night. Didn't end up playing, but looks like he's probably going to end up playing in Nashville's next game on Friday. So not something I'm too worried about if you're a Philip Forsberg owner. Next is Dougie Hamilton of the New Jersey Devils, and he exited the game, unfortunately, in their last game. And there's been basically no update on him. So I have no idea how serious this injury is. Hopefully he's okay. But in his absence, it looks like P.K. Subban was actually elevated to the top power play in New Jersey. I don't love Subban, but if you're desperate for a defenseman, he may actually be a pretty decent add in Hamilton's absence for as long as Hamilton remains out. Next is Kevin Hayes of the Philadelphia Flyers. And according to the coach, he could be practicing in full with the team very, very soon. Apparently, he's progressing very well. So potentially could be back sometime next week, probably the week after that, though. Don't mind him as a sneaky ad if you have room on your IR because he should slot in as Philly's second line center between Atkinson and Konechny. Next is Ryan Ellison. He's missed the last few games with an LVI. I don't think it's anything too, too serious, but it looks like he's probably going to miss another game or two, but I don't expect it to last too much longer than that. Next is Sidney Crosby, and it hurts me inside to include him again on this list because he... (laughs) Finally, finally came back from that injury at the beginning of the season. Played one whole game. Didn't even do anything that game. And now apparently has coronavirus. So that's going to keep him out for a few days. And apparently he's mildly symptomatic. So it's going to keep him out longer for a bare minimum of 10 days. So don't expect Crosby in your lineup for at least 10 days. It's so unfortunate. But that's just the way it is sometimes with fantasy. You can't control everything. There's a lot of COVID cases right now, and something's got to change probably in the NHL because of it. Next is Brian Rust, and he practiced on Wednesday with a non-contact jersey, which is a really good sign for his progression. Yeah, it's not, not a contact jersey, but he could be ready within a week or so potentially, which is a really, really good sign. I'm not expecting him to be in my lineup next week, but it is a possibility, although the week after that is probably a sure thing. Next is Jared McCann of the Seattle Kraken, and he is in COVID protocol. I don't think he has symptoms. No one said that yet. I don't think he's going to be out the full 10 days but he's going to be missing at least Seattle's next game, it looks like, on Thursday night. But beyond that, for their next game, McCann could potentially return. Next is Timo Meyer of the San Jose Sharks, and he was placed on the COVID protocol yesterday, so he is going to be missing at least 10 days out of the lineup, so he won't be playing this week and won't be playing any games in the first half of next week. Beyond that, you could probably expect him back in your lineup. You can say pretty much the exact same thing for Eric Carlson. He's also in the COVID protocol and is on IR. So you can safely assume that Carlson will miss the entirety of this week as well. Next is Ryan O'Reilly, and he's already missed three games with COVID, unfortunately, and he will be missing Thursday night. But there is a chance that he could be ready in time for Sunday night's game. Until such a time, Braden Shannon is taking over his spot on the top line in St. Louis, but I doubt he's available in your league. 
Next is Mark Stone, and he still has no timetable for a return. He's been skating, which is a good sign, but he's not going to be returning this week and probably not next week either, which is pretty unfortunate considering that the injury at first was described somewhere between day-to-day -day and week-to-week, -week. so it looks like it's definitely more week-to-week. -week. So hopefully he comes back soon after next week. All right, so next is William Carlson of the Vegas Golden Knights, and he's going to be missing the next four to six weeks with a foot injury, unfortunately. Right now, it's Nick Roy centering that top line with Marcheseau and Riley Smith in his place. In deep leagues, he makes for a really good ad. Next is TJ Oshie of the Washington Capitals. Unfortunately, last week he was injured, and he's being described as week-to-week -week injury, guys. It's been about a week already since his injury, but it looks like he's going to miss probably at least one more week, probably more. Unfortunately, guys, you got to keep TJ Oshie. Hopefully you have the IR room because you're, you're not dropping TJ Oshie unless you're in like the most shallow leagues. It looks like Connor Sherry is bizarrely on the top power play now, so he honestly makes for not the worst pickup in the world. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the content, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.